And we are kicking things off with the 3,000 year old arrow. This is a super recent discovery, it just happened back in September. A glacial archaeologist named Espen Finstad was hiking through the Jotunheim Mountains in eastern Norway when he came across a wooden arrow. It was so well preserved that to the naked eye, it would probably look brand new. It even still had feathers on it. But Finstad estimated that this arrow was actually around 3,000 years old. He later determined it was was likely used by a hunter in the late Stone Age to early Bronze Age. Finstad stated, What makes the arrow so impressive is its preservation. Though it is broken into three parts, the arrow remains attached to the shaft, as do the feathers, known as fletchings which helped to stabilize the arrow's flight path. So this is just one of the many artifacts turning up uh, once frozen under you know thick layers of ice, you know, not just in Norway, but in cold climates all around the world as glaciers continue to melt. If you are enjoying our content so far, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to leave your thoughts, uh, your comments, complaints down below. Uh, I'll usually read them. At number nine, we have Mummy Juanita. Mummy Juanita, also known as the Ice Maiden or Lady of Ampato, is an exceptionally well-preserved mummy of an Inca girl which was discovered in 1995. The mummy was found on Mount Ampato, a dormant volcano in the Andes Mountains of southern Peru, by anthropologist Johann Reinhard and his team. Mummy Juanita is believed to have lived during the Inca Empire, making her one of the best preserved ancient bodies ever found. She was approximately 12 to 14 years old at the time of her death. The mummy was found at an altitude of about 20,600 feet, and her discovery was kind of accidental. Reinhard and his team were actually on a mission to recover another Inca mummy when they stumbled on her in a crevice. She was wrapped in several layers of colorful textiles and buried with various offerings, including ceramic and metal objects, food items, and small statues. She was probably sacrificed as an offering to the Inca gods. The mummy is currently on display in the Catholic University of Santa Maria's Museum of Andean Sanctuaries in Peru. Uh, you know, so get over there immediately. Tap on her glass encasing and uh, tell her Uncle James said hello. First person in the comments to do that will receive a, a wink emoji from me and a $10 gift certificate to Walden Books. Number eight, the mammoth mummy. No, this is not a giant sized human mummy. That would be pretty awesome. This is pretty awesome too, but it's, it's a mummified woolly mammoth. In 2010, a team of Russian scientists found a well-preserved mammoth in Siberia, later named Yuka. She was a young mammoth, about six to eight years old, and lived around 39,000 years ago. Yuka's body was in really good shape. Its body measured about two and a half meters in length, and it was remarkably intact with her trunk, bones, some of her flesh, hair, and even eyes still preserved, making her one of the most well-preserved mammoth specimens ever found. It's pretty incredible to see, not that I've ever seen it uh, in person, but based on pictures and video that I have seen of it, uh, crazy how well-preserved it is. Finding a dinosaur in this condition would be absolutely unreal. Anyway, they think she might have fallen into a mud pit or drowned, which helped to uh, preserve her so well. People probably butchered her for meat as there were cut marks on her bones. Scientists studied her DNA to learn more about mammoths and their connection to modern elephants. Right now, Yuka is currently being held in Moscow. Coming in at number seven, tombstones. When it comes to items involved in a satanic ritual, I am sure that the Warrens managed to corner that market. I mean, are there other haunted museums? Absolutely, but theirs is really the one that started it all. One of these allegedly satanically involved items you can find hiding about are a series of tombstones that the Warrens claim were used in a dark occult ritual by those who work on the darker side of the paranormal. However, what makes these tombstones especially creepy is that they reportedly belong to rather young people. And so the Warrens had reason to believe that the young people were not not only used as a sacrifice, but then their tombstones were used to finalize the ritual. So, you know, just all around very dark and evil stuff. Coming in at number six, a brick. It's not all Hollywood-based sensations inside the museum. In fact, one of their most prized and feared possessions looks about as plain as you could imagine. It's a brick. Like, 
from a house. But of course, this is no ordinary brick. It's in an occult museum after all. This brick in particular was from the Borley Rectory, a now famous building that was demolished in 1944 after it was badly damaged in a fire. But what made it such a sensation was that prior to the 1939 fire, it had long been rumored to be the most haunted building in all of the United Kingdom which is a pretty tall order considering how many allegedly haunted buildings span across the UK. Allegedly, the night of the fire, there were over 2,000 reports of paranormal activity, including floating bricks thought to have been possessed by a poltergeist. So if rumors are true, that would make this brick probably the most terrifying brick ever. Which I mean, I don't know how much competition it really has there, but still, it's a demonic brick. It's terrifying no matter what. Coming in at number five, Pearls of Death. While it's probably a pretty safe blanket rule that you shouldn't go around touching much of anything you find in Ed and Lorraine's demonic collection, some stuff is probably a little worse than others. And this next one falls into the latter category. Notoriously one of the most dangerous items found inside the museum, the Pearls of Death is a cursed necklace said to do exactly as the name suggests. Allegedly, anyone who dares place them around their neck will be choked and suffocated to death. Now, my question about this necklace is, is it like a Frodo and the Ring style situation where it will call to you, slowly infecting your brain through mind control until it practically forces you to place it around your neck? Or does it just wait for someone to unknowingly do it before it unleashes all hell on the victim? I guess I will never know, because you can bet I won't be testing it out for myself. Coming in at number four, The Conjuring Mirror. Despite what the name would have you believe, The Conjuring Mirror actually has really nothing to do with The Conjuring movies. Instead, this haunted mirror gets its name from the fact that it was, at one point, allegedly used to summon or conjure spirits. Once in the possession of a man named Stephen Zellner, legend has it that Stephen practiced a kind of witchcraft known as catoprotromancy, I probably butchered that, in order to see into the future and seek out revenge on his enemies. However, the more that Stephen used the mirror, the more and more corrupt he and his use of the magic became. Eventually, it's said the evil spirits he had conjured to do his bidding became too powerful to control and turned on the very person who had summoned them. Soon, Stephen began fearing for his life, so as a last resort, he decided to reach out to a local priest to see if the evil spirits could be exorcised from the home. But instead, the priest put him in touch with Ed and Lorraine. Upon their arrival at Stephen's home, they immediately knew Stephen was in grave trouble. And so to keep him safe, they performed a reverse incantation spell to seal up all the spirits back inside the mirror from which they had been conjured. Afterwards, Stephen begged them to take the mirror away from him, and that is how it came to live in Ed and Lorraine's museum. However, don't get too comfortable. Despite the spell they cast, Ed and Lorraine still claim to have experienced many terrifying moments with the spirits they angered from trapping inside the smear. And who knows what could bring them back out. Coming in at number three, the shadow doll. When it comes to creepy dolls, I'll be honest, it doesn't take much to freak me out. But with that being said, there is definitely a very good reason why the shadow doll is one of the most feared possessions in the entire museum. Now, what starts off this seemingly endless list of creepy things about this doll is that there is no definitive answer as to why it was created or who created it. But according to Ed and Lorraine's files, it was made using both human and animal bones and was absolutely used in satanic rituals. So it is definitely possessed by some less than ideal company. Said to have been found in an antique shop by a couple, they began to think something was wrong after they kept waking up night after night covered in inexplicable scratches. But it wasn't until the doll began showing up in their nightmares, telling them that she was going to kill them, that they decided to get rid of the terrifying toy. And good thing they did too. Legend has it that if someone takes a picture of this doll, she will visit you in your dreams and kill you in your sleep. Just one more reason to never trust a creepy doll. 
Coming in at number two, a satanic idol. As the story goes, in 1991, a hunter was walking through the woods on the lookout for deer when he began to feel an overwhelming sense of paranoia, like he was being watched or something. At that very moment, he turned around to see this creepy doll leaned up against a tree, staring at him, and he could have sworn that it appeared out of nowhere. Immediately, the hunter knew he should not be here, and so he began walking as quickly as he could to find a way out of the forest. Then suddenly, an old man dressed in all black robes appeared beside him. He looked like a priest, the hunter thought, but something wasn't quite right. Every step he took, the priest matched him, and eventually he became so freaked out, he actually debated shooting at the priest with his arrow to scare him off. But Instead, he decided to ask the priest how to get out of the forest. But creepily, the priest did not speak. Instead, he pointed off into another direction, turned around, and left the man alone once again. Now, luckily, the hunter escaped. And the following day, after telling his friends the strange events, they suggested that he reach out to Ed and Lorraine. Upon telling them his story, they explained that the priest was a well-known leader of a satanic cult, and that the creepy doll he had encountered was actually an idol used for ritual purposes. However, the Warrens, being who they were, wanted to get this idol for the museum, and so Ed ventured into the forest, found the doll, and brought it back home. Soon after, however, strange things began happening. Allegedly, one time Ed was speaking with Lorraine, turned away for a second, looked back, and she was suddenly 30 feet away and passed out on the ground. He called the ambulance, and she spent the next three days in hospital in and out of consciousness. And according to Ed, she actually levitated while in the hospital. The Warrens always firmly believed that the satanic priest was working through the doll Ed had taken from the forest and was trying to punish them for taking it. Let's just hope no one was ever hospitalized after that. And last up in our number one spot, Annabelle. You didn't really think I was going to do a list about haunted things found in Ed and Lorraine's museum and not bring up the famous Annabelle, did you? Although nowadays she is locked up tight, this wasn't always the case. Back in 1970, Annabelle was gifted to a nursing student named Donna. But it didn't take long before Donna and her roommate Angie knew that something was off. After about a month, the roommates began finding disturbing messages lying around their apartment, warning them to help Lou. Lou was one of their friends who had apparently warned the girls of the doll since day one. Eventually, things got so creepy that the woman contacted a medium who told them not to be afraid that the doll was merely possessed by a young girl named Annabelle Higgins who had died on the property years prior. The medium advised them that Annabelle felt safe here and would like to stay, so they agreed. But that was all a part of the demon's plan. Not long after, Lou stayed over, and when he awoke from a nightmare, he found he couldn't move his body. And then, like straight out of a horror movie, he says Annabelle walked up his body and strangled him until he passed out. After that, the girls contacted a priest who put them in touch with paranormal investigators, Ed and Lorraine Warren, who discredited the medium and said it was, in fact, a very dangerous demon possessing this doll. However, even now, despite being locked up, the doll should be deeply feared. It was reported once that a man who visited the museum mocked the doll and only a few days later died after losing control of his motorbike. So yeah, she very well could be the most terrifying doll on the planet. Number 10, the Dendera Lights. When was the first light bulb invented? Well, it was way after the Common Era calendar started, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe the ancient Egyptians had some hookups for light bulbs and they used to throw dope raves. The Hathor Temple in Dendera, Egypt has carvings in the wall which look like gigantic light bulbs. The Egyptians may have found a way to harness some sort of energy to make light bulbs. If we're going to go super conspiracy theory, which we are, some people believe that the pyramids were actually power plants with copper wires inside of them. They used them to tap into the natural electrical energy floating around the atmosphere, pull it down into the earth, and send it into surrounding cities. If this is true, my Egyptian rave theory is not that far off. Number 9. Robots? 
We barely have robots now. And you're telling me that before they had toilet paper, they were making robots? Well, not that high tech, but it's still pretty cool. In ancient Greece, Philion of Byzantium made a working maid. The way this contraption worked, it was a statue with moving parts. It was perfectly weighted with a pitcher in one hand and the other hand was open. When you placed a cup in the open hand, it would shift the weight of the statue, causing it to move and pour the pitcher into the cup. Basically, the best bartender ever. He'll never cut you off. This was one of the only artifacts like this, so it's most likely that robots weren't commonplace back then. It was probably only the super rich ancient Greeks that could afford it. This robot was the 8K TV of its day. Number eight, Turkish gilding. Over 8,000 years ago, the Turks were balling. They were putting gold on everything. They put gold on your house, gold in your chairs, gold on your baby. I don't know if that last one is true, but it was 8,000 years ago. I'm sure someone had to try. Who wouldn't want to put gold on a baby? That'd be dope, you have a golden baby. The Turks would use mercury to perfect this gilding process and they were so good at it that we still haven't figured out how to do it to this day. It's 8,000 years later, and with all the technological advancements we have now, we still can't find out exactly how they did it. Maybe it was aliens. Maybe the alien version of Bobby Shmoda came down and helped them put gold on everything. Next up, we have the Greenland Norse textiles. Uh, these textiles are a collection of ancient fragments discovered in 1921 in various archaeological sites in Greenland. The textiles provided insights into the types of clothing and weaving techniques of the Norse settlers who lived in Greenland during the medieval period. The sites where these fabrics were found are part of the remnants of Norse settlements in Greenland, which thrived between the 10th and 15th centuries. Fabrics discovered include woolen garments and household items. They were remarkably well preserved due to the cold and dry climate of Greenland, which helped prevent decay. The textiles had a bunch of different weaving patterns, colors, and designs that reflected the skill and artistry of the Norse weavers back in the day. It's interesting to see what their clothing looked like beyond depictions of them in ancient artwork. These fabrics uh, have also been useful in understanding the challenges faced by the Norse settlers in Greenland and how they adapted to the harsh environment. And at number six, we have the Kostenki 17 artifacts. The Kostenki 17 artifacts were discovered at the Kostenki site in Russia, an archaeological site known for its wealth of Upper Paleolithic finds. The artifacts discovered at the site include bone and antler tools, bone ornaments, and various artifacts made from organic materials. Archaeologists dug up a number of bone and antler tools, like spear points, knives, and needles, tools that had been crafted with remarkable precision. They also found ornaments made from bone like beads and pendants. On top of that, there were plenty of hunting tools like projectile points along with bones of animals that they had hunted. Some other notable discoveries at the site were engraved objects and fragments. These engravings often depict animals in geometric uh, patterns, showcasing the type of artwork they would have made at the time. At our number five spot, we have the Siberian Ice Maiden, also known as the Princess of Ukok or the Altai Princess. This is a mummy of a young woman that was discovered in 1993 in the Ukok Plateau of the Altai Mountains in Siberia. The Siberian Ice Maiden was discovered by Russian archaeologist Natalia Palasmak in a tomb on the Ukok Plateau. The site was located in an altitude about 8,200 feet. The mummy is believed to date back to around 500 BC, making her approximately 2,500 years old. The mummy was found in a wooden sarcophagus covered with felt blankets and a cowhide rug. She was dressed in intricately woven garments made of wool and felt that was also adorned with jewelry, you know, earrings and necklace, various ornaments made of gold and other precious metal. So it's likely she held a high social status within the community. Her burial seemed to have been part of a complex ritual too, which led the archeologists to believe she could have been a priestess or a noblewoman. Number four, the Etherican Brown Bear. 2019, scientists uh, made a pretty cool discovery in Siberia. A thousands year old 
brown bear carcass preserved in the permafrost. The ancient brown bear carcass was discovered by reindeer herders. It was incredibly well preserved because of the permafrost conditions which prevented decay. The carcass dates back approximately 3,500 years, placing it in the Late Bronze Age. This age estimation was made through radiocarbon dating, a technique used to determine the age of organic materials based on their content of carbon-14 isotopes. Next on the list is Quede Dan Shinichi, which was the name given to a remarkably well-preserved body discovered at Tachanshini Alaska Provincial Park in British Columbia, Canada. Quede Dan Shinichi was discovered by hunters in the remote wilderness northwestern British Columbia. The body was found partially buried in the ice, surrounded by a variety of artifacts. He was believed to have lived over 550 years ago, around the early 15th century, a member of one of the indigenous tribes that inhabited the region during that time. The body's preservation was due to the glacier ice, which acted as a natural freezer, protecting the remains from decomposition. And along with the body, again, a variety of artifacts were discovered. There was a robe made from animal hides, a spruce root hat, a woven mat, a walking stick, various tools made from stone and bone. The body was then ceremonially reburied in 2000, following traditional rituals and protocols. Coming in at number two, we have the Landbreen tunic. In 2011, during archaeological excavations in Landbreen, Norway, this ancient piece of clothing was discovered. The tunic was a remarkable archaeological find, revealing more information about ancient Norse clothing and textile techniques. The Landbreen site in the mountains of Norway was once frequented by travelers during the Roman Iron Age, approximately 300 to 500 AD. Because of the ice and snow in the region, many artifacts, including textiles, have been incredibly well preserved. And the tunic, it's made of wool, dates back to around 230. AD. It's a tunic style garment with a natural brown color, a simple design. It has a twill weave, a pattern commonly used in textiles in that era. Just think of how much of our clothing, by the way, is going to be left behind after we eventually leave Earth or go extinct, let alone all our other crap. We churn out so much stuff on a constant basis, more so than at any point in history. I think finding stuff from this era is going to be so common in the future that it'll be more of a nuisance rather than a remarkable find. Finally though, taking that number one spot is Otzi the Iceman. Now, why is this number one? I don't know, not really any particular ranking going on here, just uh, a good one to close off with. In September of 1991, hikers Helmut and Erica Simon stumbled upon a well-preserved human corpse high in the Alps near the border of Austria and Italy. Later known as Otzi the Iceman, the two hikers saw the remains and actually thought he could have died relatively recently. But no, Otzi was an ancient human who had lived over 5,000 years ago during the late Neolithic period. He was so well preserved because he'd been encased in ice for that thousands and thousands of years. His body was found in the Otzel Alps. The discovery site was in the Schnalzalval Sinalis Valley, a region that was once covered by glaciers completely. Scientists discovered that Otzi lived between 3359 and 3105 BCE, making him one of the oldest and most well preserved naturally mummified humans ever found. He was five foot five and weighed around 110 pounds. The age at the time of his death was estimated to be around 45 years old. Besides his body, researchers also found a bunch of artifacts and clothing items with him. A copper axe, a quiver of arrows, a bearskin cap, and a coat made of woven grass and hide. Otzi's remains and belongings are currently housed in the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Balzano, Italy. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have a throwing spear. A throwing spear that was approximately crafted over 10,300 years ago was discovered by Dr. Craig Lee from Montana State University in 2007. It was discovered in northern Wyoming. 10,300 years ago, holy moly, just saying that is so trippy and hard to wrap my brain around the idea of people existing at that point. But in any case, this spear at first glance 
appear just like a stick, but then after closer inspection, he discovered that it was a dart from a throwing spear. At this point, it is the oldest frozen artifact found yet. It's been a source of inspiration for others to continue the hunt for artifacts that are being revealed as a result of melting ice patches, and it certainly has created a sense of urgency for people to get hunting for these unbelievable items. In our number 9 spot, we have the Yukon Treasures. A size 4 moccasin shoe from 1400 years ago was found melting in the Yukon, and my inner shopaholic is super excited about it. So of course I had to include it on this list. Along with this shoe, two other items were found. A barbed antler projectile point from about 1200 years ago, and throwing darts from 9,000 years ago. Apparently they were found by a husband and wife in 1997 who were hunting doll sheep in the Yukon Mountains when they smelt something extremely strange. It was dung. Yes poop from a caribou. But the thing is, caribou hadn't been in this area for many, many years, so they decided to inspect it. <laughs> Naturally? <laughs> I wouldn't. Anyways, I guess they discovered that the poop was from thousands of years ago that had frozen into ice, and close behind it were these artifacts that had melted along with it. Pretty wild. In our number 8 spot we have animal hair rope. While out exploring the mountaintops of western Mongolia, archaeologist and researcher Isaac Hart of the University of Utah discovered something quite interesting that he felt would truly help with discovering more about the Mongolia people in ancient times. They discovered a finely woven piece of animal hair rope. This rope was first thought to have been dropped in the ice recently, however after scientists performed some radiocarbon tests on it to see how old it was, it was proven to be more than 1,500 years old. Wow, that's some old rope. In our number 7 spot today, we have Charles Manson's TV. There are many haunting tales surrounding this TV, and honestly, that makes a lot of sense considering its history, as it was the one that was present in the Spawn Ranch where Manson and his followers resided for a period of time. This ranch was a former movie ranch that had fallen into disrepair and was used as a hideout by the Manson family. It was during their time at the ranch that they planned and carried out their atrocious crimes. The TV was present in the living quarters at the ranch and was said to have played a significant role in Manson's ability to manipulate and control his followers. Manson would often use the TV as a tool to brainwash and indoctrinate his followers with apocalyptic visions and very harmful ideologies. The TV was seized as evidence by the police following the arrest of the Manson family members and has since been sold at auction. The exact whereabouts of the TV at this point in time are unknown, but many have said that the TV is cursed by the evil energy that Manson himself held. In our number 6 spot today we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring is a clay ring discovered in 1860 in an Egyptian high priest's tomb in the Valley of Kings. Howard Carter acquired the ring and kept it until his death in 1939. The ring is believed to be over 5,000 years old and is decorated with very unique geometric symbols not seen before in Egyptian culture. What makes this story so intriguing is that Carter, who discovered King Tut's tomb, claimed to have worn the ring as a talisman during the tomb's opening, which protected him from the curse. Unlike other members of his team, he did not die a mysterious death afterward. Instead, he attributed his protection to the ring's power. So I guess the ring is kind of like an anti-cursed object due to its association with the protection of Howard Carter. Although replicas are available, none are believed to possess the power of the original Atlantis ring. In our number 5 spot today, we have Bella Lugosi's mirror. Bella Lugosi, the actor who famously portrayed Dracula on screen, owned a mirror that is said to be cursed. According to legend, the mirror was given to Lugosi by a fan who claimed that it was possessed by the spirit of a dead woman. Lugosi allegedly experienced strange occurrences after acquiring the mirror, including seeing the reflection of the woman's face in the glass. He tried to get rid of the mirror, but it reportedly kept returning to him. After his death, the mirror passed through the hands of several owners who also reported strange phenomena associated with it, such as cold spots and apparitions. Some even claimed to have seen Lugosi's face staring back at them from the mirror. Today, the whereabouts of the mirror are unknown, and it remains one of the most mysterious and haunted objects in Hollywood history. In our number 4 spot today, we have Uluru Rock. Uluru Rock is a massive sandstone formation located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is a sacred site for the indigenous people of the area, and it is known as Ayers Rock. Visitors are advised not to take anything from the site, as it is considered disrespectful, 
and can bring bad karma. However, some people still choose to smuggle pieces of rock out of the area. This act has reportedly resulted in severe consequences including bad luck, illness, and even the death of loved ones. The curse associated with these stolen rocks is so strong that it is common for the company that manages the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology with the returned rocks. This phenomenon happens so often that the company expects to receive at least one letter a day. While some may dismiss this as a mere coincidence, the frequency and consistency of these occurrences suggest otherwise. In our number 3 spot today we have Natalie Wood's yacht. The haunting tales surrounding Natalie Wood's yacht, named The Splendor, have been the subject of speculation and controversy for decades. In November 1981, the actress was on a weekend trip aboard the yacht with her husband Robert Wagner and friend Christopher Walken. The circumstances surrounding her death have remained a mystery, but it is known that Wood drowned in the water near the yacht and her body was found the next morning. The yacht itself has been the subject of strange occurrences and haunting tales ever since. According to reports, strange noises and unexplained occurrences have been observed on board the yacht. Witnesses have reported hearing unexplained voices and footsteps, as well as doors opening and closing on their own. Some have even claimed to have seen the ghostly apparition of Natalie Wood herself still wearing the same clothing she had on the night of her death. Despite the rumors and tales, there is no concrete evidence to support the idea that the yacht that the yacht is actually haunted. However, the tragic circumstances surrounding Natalie Wood's death and the mysterious events that have been reported on the yacht have contributed to its reputation as a haunted vessel. In our number two spot today, we have the Screaming Skull. The Screaming Skull is housed in Burton Agnes Hall in England and is believed to have belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith. Catherine was the youngest in her family and enjoyed wandering the property, but on one such walk, she was attacked and robbed by a group of individuals who left her severely injured. Despite being brought back to the hall, Catherine passed away a few days later. Before her death, she requested that her family remove her head and keep her skull so that they would always have a piece of her with them. Following her burial, the family experienced strange occurrences in the house, including bumps, moans, and screams. It was then said that they decided to fulfill Catherine's request and the strange happenings stopped. However, when a maid found the skull and threw it out of a nearby window, which is a strange thing to do when you find a skull, the strange occurrences began again. Eventually, the family decided to place the skull in a secret spot within the walls of the house so that Anne's spirit could rest in peace. The story serves as a reminder to honor the wishes of those who have passed to avoid any lingering spiritual activity. In our number one spot today, we have the Dark Mirror, finishing this list off with another cursed mirror. This one is now a part of the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and Occult, and that in itself is enough to understand why it is considered to be a cursed object. The museum acquired the mirror from its previous owner who had bought it from a psychic fair. Despite being created sometime around the 1820s or 1830s, the mirror still boasts a beautiful appearance, but it is believed to hold some dark secrets. The former owner reported that every time they looked into the mirror, they saw disturbing images that left them feeling very unsettled. Since joining the museum's collection, guests have also reported similar experiences, seeing reflections of their own dead bodies and other unsettling apparitions. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Ed Gein's Cauldron. Ed Gein's Cauldron is a cast iron pot that was found on the property of the infamous serial killer, Ed Gein. Gein was known for his gruesome crimes in the 1950s, and when police searched his property, they discovered not only the remains of his victims, but also various macabre artifacts made from human bones and skin. Among these items was the cauldron, which Gein allegedly used to hold body parts during his gruesome acts. After Gein's arrest, the cauldron was kept as evidence for several years before being returned to his family. However, it is said that the cauldron is cursed and has brought misfortune to anyone who has possessed it. According to legend, a man who bought the cauldron in the 1960s met a very quick and horrible demise shortly afterward. And another owner reportedly suffered from a series of tragic accidents. Today, the cauldron's whereabouts are unknown, and it remains a mysterious and haunting artifact associated with one of America's most notorious criminals. In our number 9 spot today, we have have John Merle's thumb. John Merle's thumb is a small, shriveled digit that is believed to have belonged to John Merle, a notorious American criminal who lived during the 
19th century. The digit is said to possess a powerful curse and is associated with various tales of hauntings and misfortune. One of the most popular legends surrounding the thumb is that it is cursed to bring bad luck to anyone who possesses it. According to the legend, the thumb was cut off from Miro's body after his execution and passed down through a series of owners who all experienced misfortune and tragedy. It is said that the thumb would cause accidents, sickness, and even death to those who kept it in their possession. Another tale tells of a man who came into possession of the thumb and began experiencing strange occurrences, such as objects moving on their own and eerie whispers in the night. The man eventually became so terrified that he buried the thumb in a field, but it is said that the haunting continued even afterwards. Despite its ominous reputation, John Merle's thumb has been sought after by collectors and paranormal enthusiasts over the years. Some even believe that the thumb possesses a sort of supernatural power that can be harnessed for personal gain. However, most people are content to leave the thumb where it belongs and avoid any potential consequences of disturbing its resting place. In our number 8 spot today, we have Old Neck. Old Neck, also known as the Swan Sea Devil, is a legendary figure that dates back to the 1890s and currently resides in the Swan Sea Museum. During that time, the prestigious St. Mary's Church, located in the town's center, was undergoing renovations, and when a local builder was turned down for the job, he sought revenge. He purchased a row of cottages adjacent to the church, demolished them, and built large brick offices, topping them with a carving of Old Neck. According to legend, he placed a curse on the church himself, declaring that this devil would remain laughing after its destruction. Years later, during World War II, the town was heavily bombed and St. Mary's, along with most of the town, was destroyed. However, the office building with Old Nick remained undamaged. After the war, Old Nick disappeared, but later resurfaced, prompting a petition to return him to his former spot and also a counter petition to keep him far away from the rebuilt church. Currently, Old Nick resides behind glass in the Swansea Museum, and it is said that the glass enclosure is for the protection of visitors. Number seven, the Copper Scroll. The Dead Sea Scrolls were a series of religious manuscripts that were discovered in the mid 1900s in, you guessed it, the Dead Sea. One of the most unusual of these scrolls is known as the Copper Scroll, it getting this name because it is, of course, inscribed in copper. The text on the scroll describes the hiding places of vast quantities of treasure, including up to 65 metric tons of gold and silver objects. Unfortunately, we haven't actually been able to find any of these treasures, and that's because the hiding places described on the scroll are incredibly cryptic, it not being your typical X marks the spot buried treasure map. They describe the treasure as being hidden in places like in the great cistern, which is in the courtyard of the little colonnade, and in the eastward looking cave of the pillar with two entrances. Yeah, definitely pretty vague. Whether or not these treasures actually exist is also up for debate, some people saying they were real and captured by the Romans, and some people saying that they were just totally made up. Number 6. The Q Source The Q Source is the name of a hypothetical text that supposedly was used to help write the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. Most historians believe that the Gospel of Mark was the earliest Christian Gospel, and that it and the Q Source were used to help the authors of the Gospel of Matthew and Luke write their texts. Archaeologists have so far been unable able to find the Q source, leading some people to believe that instead of a written text, it was actually just an oral tradition that was passed down. While there are many copied copies of the famous Christian Gospels, scholars believe it's unlikely that a written Q source would have had many versions, which is what's making it so hard to find to this day. The contents of the Q source is apparently mostly Jesus' sayings, but I guess we'll never know for sure unless a written Q source is actually someday discovered. Number 5. The Burial Shroud it's well known that after Jesus' crucifixion, he was buried within a cave, being sealed in behind a large stone. The part of the story that's up for debate is whether or not Jesus actually rose from the dead three days later, but we know for a fact he was a real guy who was actually buried in that cave. Mark 15 46 says, Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door 
of the tomb. Many explorers and historians have gone in search of the linen cloth or shroud that Jesus was buried in. There have been numerous forgeries over the years, most famously the Shroud of Turin, which was actually created in the Middle Ages. What happened to the real shroud remains unknown to this day, and people say that it's unlikely we'll ever actually be able to find it. Number 4. The Ring of St. Edward In the year 1005, St. Edward the Confessor was born into the royal family, and in 1042, he took the throne. He was viewed by the people as a deeply religious leader who did many good things, like removing unjust taxes, healing the sick, and taking a vow of chastity. He also built a cathedral that would come to be known as Westminster Abbey. St. Edward healed the sick using a sapphire ring that he had, and one day he was approached by a beggar who asked him for money. He didn't have any money on him, so he instead removed his ring and gave it to the beggar. Years later, pilgrims who were stranded in the Holy Land were rescued by St. John the Evangelist, who had the ring that Edward had given the beggar. He told the pilgrims to return to Edward and give him the ring, and to tell him that he would be dead in six months. And he was. The ring was kept in Westminster Abbey for many years, but it and many other relics went missing after the dissolution of the monastery. To this day, the ring has not been located, though it's believed that the sapphire from the ring is the center jewel on the imperial state crown. Number 3. The Veil of Veronica The story of the Veil of Veronica was not recorded in its current form until the Middle Ages, and tells the story of a meeting between Saint Veronica and Jesus. She encountered Jesus along the Via de la Rosa and stopped to use her veil to wipe the blood and sweat from his brow. When she did so, Jesus' image became copied onto the veil. After that moment, it then apparently gained mythical powers, like quenching thirst, allowing the blind to see, and even raising people from the dead. There is written evidence that the veil was displayed in the 13th to 15th centuries, but after 1527, its fate is unknown. Some people believe that it was destroyed in Rome, or had even been stolen and made its way through taverns. After its disappearance, many copies started to pop up, despite the Pope prohibiting them from being made. In 1629, he then ordered that all copies of the veil be destroyed, and if you refuse to give up your copy, you would be excommunicated from the church. Number 2. The Nephilim In the Bible, the Nephilim were a group of incredibly large and strong beings who lived both before and after the Flood, being described as being the offspring of fallen angels and human women. Many critics of the Bible laugh at its description of supposed giants, but if these creatures actually existed, it means that there are probably remains of them out there somewhere. Giant human skeletons that would squash any doubt that they had existed. Archaeological evidence from the ancient times does exist that could show the existence of giants, though it has never really been fully analyzed as most people brush it off as not having been possible or real. There are other recordings and even art pieces that may also lend credit to the fact that these giants had once existed, and many people believe that the skeletal evidence is out there somewhere, just waiting to be discovered. Number 1. The Holy Grail If you've seen Monty Python, then you're probably pretty familiar with this one. The Holy Grail or the Holy Chalice is the cup that Jesus apparently used during the Last Supper, which he had with his disciples before his crucifixion. The Bible says, Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. It's unknown what happened to the Grail after this dinner, but there are a few medieval legends surrounding it. During the reign of King Arthur, many people believed that the cup had magical properties, and Arthur took his knights on a quest to try and find the grail. Some people believe that Joseph of Arimathea, the man who had buried Jesus, had traveled to Britain and taken the cup with him. As some scholars think the Last Supper might have never even happened, we'll probably never be able to find the true Holy Grail. Starting us off at number 10, the toy monkey. So it goes without saying that almost everything that is a notable part of the Conjuring series is also a real artifact that the Warrens found along the way. One of these such artifacts, who made an appearance in both The Conjuring and the spin-off Annabelle Comes Home, is the Toy Monkey. However, if it wasn't already obvious, it's not something to be played with. As Ed tells the reporters in The Conjuring movie, everything you see here is either haunted, cursed, or been used in some kind of ritualistic practice. Nothing is a toy. 
not even the toy monkey. So what exactly makes this monkey so scary in real life? Well, allegedly, it is possessed by a terrifying demon who enjoys stalking its victims before eventually killing them. So yeah, not a very nice monkey, it seems. Although nothing you'll find in this museum is terribly friendly. Coming in at number nine, a vampire coffin. As far as creepy looking things go, I have to say this is not one of the scariest looking on the list, but of course, things are not always what they appear. This coffin found at the Warrens Museum is not just called the Vampire Coffin because of the slightly goofy looking Count Dracula face on the top, but because it was allegedly actually used by a modern day vampire. Now, I'm not saying that this is fictional, but I will say that the details surrounding this are rather few. There is no file stating how modern this modern vampire was or how it came to be in their possession but I mean, it's definitely very intriguing. My only question is, where is this so-called vampire now? Was it killed or is it roaming free? Should we be nervous that a bloodthirsty monster could be on the loose or was it more of a twilight vampire situation? I guess we will never know. Coming in at number eight, the famous music box. If you have seen The Conjuring, which by the way, if you haven't, you really should, then you will definitely recognize this next item here. In the film version of the story, the youngest child of the family, April, finds an antique music box in the house and uses it to communicate with the spirit of a young boy named Rory, who was supposedly killed by his mother, Bathsheba, in the 1800s. Now, of course, there are definitely larger things at play throughout the film, but at the end of it, viewers see Ed place the haunted music box inside of the room of artifacts, where it suddenly opens and begins to play its tinny music. Now, in real life, it didn't quite happen like that, but the real music box is safely tucked away in the Warrens Museum. However, legend has it that while it really does contain an evil spirit, it was not properly contained, and so some believe the demon could escape at any moment. Number seven, Lunar Tack Disc. When you think of Vikings, you think of pillagers, murderers, pointy hats, but they were also some of the best sailors alive. They were kings of navigating the sea, pulling up on some foreign shore and cutting everyone's head off. So it shouldn't be a huge surprise that they might have been the first civilization to discover a compass. The Lunar Tack Disc was discovered in Greenland in 1984. It's believed that the Vikings would use these devices at night when they couldn't use the sun to navigate. It's not certain how these devices would work, but it seems they would give the user a rough idea of where the sun would be in the sky after it was set. The lunar tack disc would work in parts with other things like wooden slabs and crystals. I never thought bloodthirsty Vikings would be into crystals. You come home after a long day of mass murder and your wife's like, whoa, your chakras are all over the place. Number six, the bell. I don't know if you know this, but coal takes at least 30 million years to form. That's why this next one is pretty interesting. This one is a brass bell which was discovered encased in a chunk of coal. The coal that the bell was encased in was over 300 million years old and the mine that the bell was found in was over 100 feet deep. The bell also had carvings which were similar to the Hindu god Garuda, but the bell was discovered in West Virginia. How did a brass bell with Hindu god carvings encased in 300 million year old coal end up in West Virginia? These are so many questions, but it might be signs of advanced civilizations existing in North America way before we think. Number five, the Puri Reese map. Cartography is pretty easy now that we have satellites. We can see the whole world from space and just take a picture and then print out the picture. But then the printer's like, I can't print it, I'm out of color. And you're like, whatever, just print in black and white. And he's like, nah, I need more magenta. And you're like, I said black and white. Believe it or not, Making maps was even harder back then. The Puri Reese map was discovered in 1929 by Gustav Adolf Deismann, and it was an absolute marvel. The map depicted a very detailed charting of Antarctica before it was covered with ice. It was made by cartographer Haji Ahmed Muhiddin Puri. The map is so incredibly detailed that it puzzled the archaeologists that found it. Who was able to make something this detailed without some sort of advanced technology? Also, we can't compare it to what Antarctica would look like because it's now 
covered in ice. So we'll just have to wait to find out if it's actually accurate. Number 4. The London Hammer this isn't some bad 80s hair metal band. This is the discovery of one of the oldest dated tools ever. The London Hammer was discovered by a couple who went out for a walk and they saw a chunk of wood coming out of a rock. They thought it looked interesting enough so they took it home. Later their son decided to take a hammer and chisel to it and break into it. Inside he found what looked like a crude design of a hammer. They took the hammer to some archaeologists and this is where things get crazy. The rock encasing the hammer dates back 400 million years and the iron used to make the hammer's head is over 500 million years old. The hammer's head is over 90% pure iron so there's no way this could have happened naturally in nature. Parts of the hammer's handle have been turned to coal which means the hammer itself is at least 30 million years old because the coal takes at least 30 million years to form. My guess is someone jumped into a time machine and got stuck way back. Never be the first guy to go into a time machine, wait until they work out the kinks. Number 3. The Coso Artifact in 1961, a group of hikers was going rock collecting somewhere in the California mountains. These guys were super cool dudes. They came across some geodes which are crystals encased in rock. They took them home to cut into them to see what kind of crystals would be inside. What they found was more than just crystals but a porcelain casing, a spring and some metal parts encased inside the rock. The pieces all resembled a spark plug but the rock was dated 5,000 years old. The craziest part about this is the Kazo artifact and the three hikers who made the discovery have all gone missing. Super creepy. Number 2. Nuclear Reactor How old would you think the first ever nuclear reactor is? If I told you it was 10,000 years old, you probably wouldn't believe me. Well this nuclear reactor discovered in Gaboon, Africa is actually way older than that. In 1972, a team of archaeologists dug up a 1.8 million year old nuclear reactor. They were able to determine the age through carbon dating and from the design it seems like it was man made. This is one of the craziest discoveries ever recorded. Some people think that it was a meteor that crashed into the earth and just left back some nuclear energy. But other people think that it was aliens who came here to bioengineer humans and create new life and then study it from a distant planet. I don't know. And maybe everyone's wrong. Maybe some people are right. I don't know. Number one, spheres. If you find one naturally occurring anomaly, you can chalk it up to chance. But if you find over 200 in the same place over a 30 year period, then I guess there might be something going on. Metallic spheres started popping up in a mine in South Africa in the 1970s. There were metal on the outside with some line markings that go down the center. They range from sizes of 2.5 centimeters to 10 centimeters. If you break into them, they seem to have some sort of soft material in them that breaks down when it comes in contact with the air. So far it's not that crazy. But these spheres are dated back 2.8 billion years before dinos. Before almost anything, how could you have something that's clearly crafted dated so old? Obviously I don't have the answer, but we can speculate. Time travel? Aliens? Maybe this is human beings second run at life. Maybe there's been civilizations that have lived on this planet before and we're just another group taking a shot at life. Number 10. The Ark of the Covenant If you've seen Indiana Jones then you're probably familiar with the relic that is known as the Ark of the Covenant. According to the Hebrew Bible, God told Moses to create the Ark of the Covenant in order to store the original tablets on which were written the original 10 commandments. They did so, making it out of acacia wood and covering it in gold. Around 3,000 years ago, the first temple was built in Jerusalem and the ark was stored within it until 587 BC when the temple was destroyed. After that, it's not known where the ark is or what happened to it. Some people saying that it was hidden before the temple was destroyed. While one legend claims that the ark will not be revealed until the coming of the Messiah, son of David. Some people believe that the ark was taken to Ethiopia and is stored within a church there. But one scholar said that he had seen this alleged ark back in World War II to, and that it's not the original. The Ark of the Covenant is said to have incredible powers such as instant death if you were to touch it. So if it did come back, who knows what it would be used for. Number 9. Noah's Ark A very famous story from the Bible tells the tale of Noah, who built a massive boat to hold two of every animal, to save them from a massive flooding of the earth. The flood took place because God believed that man was becoming too wicked, so he picked the person he believed most righteous, Noah, 
to survive on the ship with his family and the animals in order to repopulate the planet afterwards. After the 150 days of flooding, the Ark apparently came to rest on top of the mountains of Ararat. This mountain does actually exist in eastern Turkey, though I think we would have noticed by now if there was a giant boat sitting up there. Many explorers have gone in search of the Ark but have yielded no results. Most people these days believing that it was just a mythical story and never actually happened. In order to house that many animals, Noah's Ark would have needed to be absolutely massive. So if the boat is out there somewhere, it's probably just small pieces of it. Number 8. The Real Cross Across the globe, there are hundreds of pieces of wood that people claim to have come from the original cross that Jesus was crucified on. However, it's unlikely that any of these 2x4s actually came from the cross. During the Middle Ages, religious relics were incredibly popular, and supposed pieces of the cross were popping up all over the place, more than could make any sense. Theologian John Calvin famously said that if all these alleged pieces of the cross were gathered together, they would fill the cargo hold of an entire ship. These fake relics aren't just a thing of the past though and are still incredibly popular today. One relic seller on eBay was reported to have sold many pieces of the cross for around $500 a pop. Right now there is no piece of the cross that all scholars can agree is authentic, and it's likely that a true remnant will never actually be found, this being because it would have been made of wood and would have decomposed a long time ago. In our number 7 spot we have horn curls. On this same trip, looking for more artifacts, Isaac Hart found some Argali sheep skulls and horn curls from 1500 years ago which were stacked in a pile by ancient hunters, and this finding completely discounted some old assumptions about the Mongolian people in the past. They were long thought to be herding societies, but these findings show that perhaps they were big hunters on mountain ice. Wow, sometimes just talking about this just makes me feel super grateful to be alive today. Although we are all wimps now, just going outside when it's cold, you know, I'm already looking for the outdoor heater. Where's the outdoor heater? <laughs> What are we in ancient times? In our number 6 spot we have Iron Age Tunic. Apparently as Norway's glaciers begin to melt, archaeologists are beginning to uncover a ridiculous amount of ancient treasures and some say it is about 2000 plus items to date. One of the most notable items in my opinion is some recovered clothing that was found. Honestly not one item is better than the other, they all tell a story from the past and help us better understand how mountain populations lived, but still I think it is so cool cool to see that they found some clothing that's approximately from 300 AD, an Iron Age tunic to be exact. That's not that old though compared to some of the other items that were found on this dig that were approximately 4000 years old, but still, pretty cool. And one of the older items that was found is in our number 5 spot today, which is the walking stick. Now this item also is not as old as some of the throwing darts that were found, but it's so unique and cool that I had to put it on the list. It's not just any old walking stick, it's a walking stick with runic inscription. Whoa, so cool. I actually have rocks with ruins on them at home that I bought from like a new AG store and I love to look at them. Ruins are truly fascinating and quite beautiful so I'm a big believer in symbology and the energy and power infused in symbols so anyways when I saw this recovered walking stick from the 11th century AD I kind of freaked out and needed to share. In our number 4 spot we have arrowheads. This is actually so cool, the entire video has been so fun to research but finding this out was very interesting. I definitely need to go to museums more, I don't think I knew that I enjoyed history so much. Anyways, in 2003 a hiker was walking in a mountain pass near Sion, Switzerland when he came across some treasures. Not gold, sadly, but what he found were items that are arguably way cooler from a stone age hunter from over 3000 years ago. They were fragments of a bow, an arrow case, arrowheads, and leg coverings, all believed to be revealed due to the ice in the glaciers melting due to the rapidly changing climate. Pretty crazy. Imagine just going for a hike and discovering some ancient artifacts. I bet you there will never be a more interesting moment in your life. Although fine, the birth of your future child could be fairly special too. In our number 3 spot we have the Viking Whisks. Technically not considered ancient artifacts, but I thought this was cool and it needed an honorable mention. The melting of glaciers in Norway has actually revealed a lost mountain pass, and with it, hundreds of Viking artifacts have been discovered. 
The pass was discovered back in 2011 as ever since the glaciers have continued to melt and more and more artifacts have been recovered. The archaeologists believe the pass was used from the Roman Iron Age 300 AD to the Viking Age 1000 AD. From horseshoes to sled fragments to wooden needles to wooden whisks, all kinds of artifacts have been recovered. One of the most unique items include a Viking mitten and a blue textile rug. Wow, imagine finding a rug frozen on a mountain. Also, it's just wild to think that the Vikings had rugs. All I can think of when I think of Vikings is war. So, it's probably just me and my limited imagination due to my limited knowledge of history. In our number two spot, we have arrowheads. Over 100,000 artifacts were recently uncovered in a place called Nunalik in Alaska. These artifacts belong to the Yupik peoples who lived there. There have been stories told over many centuries of a gruesome massacre that occurred during the Bow and Arrow War Days, which was a series of long, brutal battles. Up until recently, the area had been frozen in the subsoil known as permafrost. The most notable items that were found were the slate arrow points that further proved the stories that have been told about these war times. Although these items aren't technically ancient, they are truly a wonder for archaeologists to discover and I thought it needed to be on this list. In our number one spot, we have an ancient lunchbox. A 3,500 year old lunchbox was discovered in Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. No, it didn't have a 3,500 year old cheese sandwich in it, but it did have traces of ancient cereal. Whoa, some ancient dude was just walking around the Alps eating an ancient version of Lucky Charms. The lunchbox is a Bronze Age wooden container and apparently the food traces were of wheat and barley or rye grains. The lunchbox was made from Swiss pine and its rim was made from willow sewn together with European larch twigs. It was found in a melting ice patch in 2012. That's incredible. Probably my fave find on this list, but anything to do with food just makes me excited. Excuse me as I go pour myself a bowl of Lucky Charms. Feel free to join me if you like.